program and resetting a culture on the football field. Welcome into the next edition of the State Line Sports Reporters Podcast. I'm Cole Johnson, and as the calendar flips to the month of April, spring football has taken its course at the collegiate level. And one of our other local colleges was able to suit up and take the field for a first official spring session practice on Wednesday afternoon, and it came with a new look. UVA Wise football took the field with their new head coach, Gary Bass, who took the position as the next head man in line in December. Now Bass comes from Quincy University where he spent the last seven years as the head coach there now taking on a new look in Wise Virginia and I've had a chance to catch up with coach Bass over the last several months since he took the position and one thing that really stands out is his how he puts relationships ahead of everything starting there from the program from the top to bottom as they then branch that out to the community and wise in itself and then they get on the football field and see what they need to work on and things they need to work on through the summer before that season opener in the fall now I was able to sit down with coach Bass ahead of that first practice after weeks of weight training and team building and he goes on through things of his background in football to his mentors and to ultimately why he came to wise and to rebuild this culture so take a listen all right so now i'm joined by coach gary bass here at uva wise as we have a conversation ahead of their first spring practice they've been doing stuff for the past couple of weeks but mm -hmm. finally getting out there first official kind of thing this afternoon how does that feel to know that you can kind of really get things kicking and going today well i mean it's you finally get an opportunity to see exactly what all we've done since we've gotten here in january i mean we've spent so much time in the weight room leadership training culture development uh, and just getting everybody to understand what the expectations and standards are of this football program moving forward and last couple of weeks after spring break been nice we've been able to get on the field and do a little bit of work from that standpoint but i mean it's the first opportunity for us the coaching staff to to really get a chance to evaluate these young men, see how much they've grown since January, and, uh, and God knows we're really excited to get a chance to get on that field today. Yes, yeah, so you talked about the culture development and things you're looking. What are you looking for um, over the course of the past few weeks that you've been seeing in the, in the weight room and other things? What are some things that you, you're looking for before you really get into the real football thing on the field? Well, there was three things when, when we got here uh, that we talked about the most from talking to the young men within this program was, uh, number one, uh, making sure we do a phenomenal job of building relationships. Uh, the second thing was doing a great job of holding each other accountable. Uh, and the third piece was developing them um, from a weight room perspective and also on a football field. So those were the three biggest uh, pieces that we talked about early on, trying to make sure we got the culture instilled, got the expectations and standards and the foundation of what our program is going to be about uh, in line, uh, which I think we've done a great job of it. I mean, to have uh, a leadership council already established um, through one semester, uh, of 10 guys that have done a phenomenal job has been great. And I mean, it was hard because when we were sitting down trying to go through that, we weren't exactly sure it was if we were going to be able to originally. But then once we got eight, nine weeks in and we're able to kind of start putting that group together, it was actually tough to decide because the young men within this football program have done a phenomenal job to this point in time and of doing what we want to do. And people talk about buy-in all the time. Uh, I don't talk about it. I don't look, I don't like by saying the terms buy-in. I look at it like this. If you can be bought into something, you can be bought out of something. Uh, I don't want our guys to buy into anything. I want them to believe in what we do and how we do it. Yeah, that's one thing I do remember you saying back when we talked in December mm -hmm. after you took this position. Another thing I remember you saying was the your biggest thing was the creating the relationships yep. part of it. Um, whether that's you yourself um, getting comfortable here and through your whole program. How, how's that process been going on with you settling in with your family mm -hmm. and everything and meeting everyone on this campus and how has that kind of trickled down to your players? Well, I think the first thing we had to do was do a great job of building relationships with the young men within our program. Um, getting them to understand that we're here for them, not just about football, but to develop them holistically. Uh, I think the second phase of that for me personally was making sure we did a really good job of building relationships with the people on this campus and letting them know what we're going, this program is going to be about uh, and, and how we're going to continue to push forward. Uh, and then I think the third prong of that, we're just now starting to get two certain facets of it is getting out in the community. I mean, we did a volunteer activity for seven weeks with Wise Primary and getting our guys to go, in, go over there twice a week to spend time. Uh, this Saturday is the day of service for the university. We're going back to Wise Primary to help them with some things they need to get done and just get the young men to understand that this is this community in this area's football program. Uh, it's this university's football program. It's, uh, it's the alumni's football program. It's not mine, it's ours. And we, we've got to do a great job of getting everyone to, to believe in what we do and be a part of our family. Now, you also mentioned back when we talked the first time around, was it Mark Tatum, is that right? Bart Tatum. 
Tatum. Mm-hmm. He, um, you mentioned him kind of as a mentor for yourself yes. as a coach, and one thing that he told you is to just be yourself and oh, be yeah. your coach. You told me, hey, I'm not Nick Saban, I'm not any mm-hmm. other coach, I'm Gary Bass. And um, What is the main thing that you are trying to, when you say that, what, what are you saying and, and how have you kind of feel like you've exuded that so far? Well, I think the biggest thing is we talk about all the time, be who you are and do it on purpose. And I think a lot of times when you're in a coaching profession or anything else, yes, there's going to be things you're going to bits and pieces and schematics and things you're going to take from people, but you've got to be true to yourself uh, and how you're going to do things, the consistency and action of what you're going to do. And I think that bleeds over into the young men within your program. I mean, when they see that we talk about something, but we also live it as a coaching staff um, and we believe in it just as much as we tell them to believe in it, I think that's huge. And I think you can see a lot of that come to fruition already uh, with a lot of the people that we've talked to, whether you're talking to our football players, uh, the people in this community, the people in this university or the alumni that have had the pleasure of getting the opportunity to meet already. I mean, uh, we got an opportunity to go speak at, I spoke at two different coaching clinics already uh, right after signing day. Got a chance to meet a ton of, uh, of alums um, that are very proud of this university and, and this program and exactly what they want to see out of it. And I think part of it's listening. I think a lot of times people listen to people long enough to argue with them instead of listen to them long enough to understand what they think, how they feel. Um, because this is this football program didn't start when I got here. This football program has been going on for 60 years, or if I say 60 years, the school's been here that long, but 20, 30 years, however long it's been. And we've got to do a great job of, of appealing and, and being a part of not just what we're doing right now, but the people that came before us. Okay. Um, so obviously when you take over a new a new program, there's a lot of things you got to do inside and out to, mm-hmm. before you know you guys and your your coach and staff, your players take the field in the fall. Um, are you one of those guys that goes back and have you looked at some of the stuff and film from this team from the last couple of years and seen their struggles, seen the positives and will you do that or are you just wiping it completely clean and you know starting over? I wipe, personally I wipe it completely clean because I told everyone when we got here uh, that we wanted to evaluate them on our side of things, um, exactly how we coach, how we evaluate, how we teach. Uh, because I don't know how they were taught before. I don't know the schemes that they were running before. And I don't want to have a poor perception of someone before we get an opportunity to work with them. So I personally have not watched it. I know some of our coaches have just to get a beat on what some kids are good and bad at um, to develop as we continue to move forward. But I know personally as a head coach, I, I've not watched one second of it. Uh, I don't want to. Um, it's not a uh, – I'm not uh, thinking anything poorly of things that happened beforehand. I'm here now and we get an opportunity to kind of evaluate these young men and to see exactly what they are, who they are, and what we can become as a program as we continue to move forward. So have you had those conversations with the returners and oh, told yeah. them that, that you mm-hmm. know, we're not looking at what the struggles you guys have gone through the last three years. We're starting something different. Have you, you had those conversations? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest things when you're trying to change a program, we did this for a long time when I was at Quincy University, was trying to, when you hit the reset button, you've got to wholesale hit it. You, you can't pick and choose when you want to hit the reset button. I think you holistically have got to look at everything right, wrong, or indifferent from the past. You've got to hit the reset button and you've got to start from the ground up. Uh, we're laying the foundation of a house right now is the way I look at it. We want to build a good football program, not a good football team. And in, a, in order to build a good football program, we've got to make sure that we lay the foundation correctly the first time with the culture and leadership implementation and making sure these guys understand what our expectations and standards are as we continue to move forward. And I truly believe if we do a good job of that, um, we'll see the fruits of that as we continue to move forward uh, in 20, 24, 25, 26, and on down the line. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Quincy University, so you, mm-hmm. you were there for seven seasons as the head coach. Mm-hmm. You were uh, there for, as an assistant for a couple more years before that, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, um, had one of your um, most successful seasons this past time. You led them to that. So you've been through the trials and tribulations of being a head coach in a program. Um, what are some of the key things you took from that experience at that school? And, uh, bringing you with you here for for your future. I think the the one thing that people get caught on too many times is they look at too much about negatives. Um, we've got to be extremely positive um, because there's a lot of great things about this university and what they're trying to do for our football program. Uh, the university is absolutely beautiful. This stadium is beautiful. They've redone the weight room, the locker room. They've given us a lot of ammunition to be able to grow as a football program. And I think you got to run with those positive things. I think sometimes it's real easy as a coach to get jaded by the things that you think you don't have. Um, and I think I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about what this university has academically, uh, athletically, 
uh, every from every capacity and I think that's huge uh, when it comes to that so I think number one is just the positive side of making sure that we do a great job as a coaching staff and understanding our expectations and standards I, the, I think the second piece is it comes back to sticking to your guns regardless of how things are going uh, I tell our guys all the time sometimes it gets better before it gets worse or before it gets worse before it gets better and I think that's true uh, I think there's sometimes in order to break things down and get back to square one I think you have to do a really, really good job of sticking to your guns about what you want to be about and who you want to be as a program, um, offensively, defensively, special teams wise, culturally, in the weight room, uh, and you got to stick to it. Um, anything worthwhile in life takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and we're not going to change this football program around overnight, and we've got to make sure we stick to our guns and what we want to go about doing. So your experience, um, you know, you coached some high school football before mm -hmm. you got in college too. Um, so, so when you Think back to those days, um, knowing how to you know work with and develop high school players, and mm -hmm. they make that transition into college. So now, as a head coach here at UVA Wise, what are you looking for in those high school players that are making that jump to a new level? I think the one thing that's undervalued is character and integrity. Um, you be who you are and do it on purpose. We talk about it all the time, but how you do anything is how you do everything. I've never met a superb football player that. Uh, it doesn't do things the right way in other areas of his life. I mean, we're gonna, I think it's important to look at character and integrity, talk to different people within the school. I love seeing guys that play multiple sports because it makes you a more well-rounded athlete. It also keeps you from being uh, burned out or capped out uh, athletically, makes you learn different skill sets. Uh, so I think multiple sport athletes are always huge. Uh, I don't think academics are valued in a lot enough. Uh, sometimes I think people just put on the tape and look at how talented someone is and that's the only thing they care about and you just can't do those things. Um, so, I mean, for us, lastly, is work ethic. Uh, anything that you're going to get out of life and be happy about is going to be things that you put a lot of time and passion into. So, I mean, for us, it's got to be character and integrity. It's got to be about academics. It's got to be about a work ethic and, and about someone that's got a personal drive to, to accomplish what they say they want to do. All right. So, um, for all these uh, UVA Wise fans that are going to be coming to the field uh, mm -hmm. this fall, um, to just talk about some high school players, some returners, uh, personnel-wise so far. I mean, you still got a long way to go uh, before you really know what you're going to be having in the fall. So just right now, what personnel-wise, how many high school kids you bring in, how many returners are there, how many mm -hmm. transfers, what, how, what's that? Uh, right now we're sitting somewhere between 65 and 68 with, without injuries and everything from that standpoint. We've signed 29 high school kids at this point in time. Uh, I didn't want to bring any transfers in mid-year. Uh, I wanted to get an opportunity to, to see exactly what the young men within our football program could do uh, before we evaluated what our needs may be from a transfer perspective. Uh, once we get uh, through spring ball a little bit, we'll have a better idea of exactly what we need to look for, but I'd probably say anywhere between six and eight transfers in some regards would be a number that I would ballpark right now that say we would try to go get and evaluate from that standpoint. Um, but I, I think it's, it's got to be one of those things, again, that I tell our young men within our program that they've got to be guys that fit what we want to be about. Uh, bring your lunch pail, work your tail off. This is what we've got to be about. Um, as far as what we're going to look like offensively and defensively, I mean, offensively, we're going to be an up-tempo, no-huddle team. Um, now, I tell this to people all the time, you, you can't sit here and bury your head in the sand. I mean, we've got to see what our guys are good at first. Um, we want to run the football, establish a run, be physical in the run game take care of the football, all those things you hear people talk about all the time. But I think once we get a, an opportunity to see these guys kind of get after each other and see what we can do well, you have to take your scheme and wrap it around your players. And, and I think sometimes coaches say, well, this is what we're doing and this is the only thing we're going to do. Well, that's all well and good, but if you don't have the personnel to do it, you can't do it. So we've got to be fluid enough uh, on in every aspect to be able to see what our guys are, are very good at and what their strengths and weaknesses are before we can wholesale evaluate what we're going to look like from that standpoint. Um, so back to uh, the fans that I mentioned um, that will be coming in um, to see you guys play mm -hmm. here at this field in the fall. What do you want them to get out of it when they come here and watch the new UVA Wise football under head coach Gary Bass? I think number one is a, is a tough, like I said, roll your sleeves up, work pale mentality type football team that's going to come out here and they're going to play hard. Um, they're going to be good people. They're going to do things the right way. Um, we're going to get after people in the run game, and we're going to try to stop the run but, and, and run the football offensively. But I, I think holistically if the, the biggest thing someone can walk across and tell me is that, Coach, your, your team plays hard. Like you can't substitute effort. You can't substitute work ethic and mentality, and we've got to get a mentality instilled with these young men in the next 15 practices of 
this is the type of physical roll your sleeves up mentality that we want to have as a football program and that, that exploits people's mistakes, that doesn't make a ton of our own um, and, and can go out there and consistently execute play in and play out in, in all three phases. And I think special teams has to be an ace in the hole for us. I've been a special teams coordinator for a few years, even as a head coach. And that you want to flip a script, that's field position's huge. Uh, when your offense doesn't have to go as far to score, or when your defense has a full field to, to de defend instead of a short field, it always makes things a little bit easier. And so, I mean, we've, we've got to get good in special teams fast. Okay. Um, so you have, you just mentioned the next 15 practices are big for, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of laying that groundwork and having the players know what to expect when the fall comes, summer, fall come around. Um, so for you right now, taking the field in just a little bit, these next 15 practices, what's the main thing you want to get out of this spring? It's funny. We, we, I'm big on – people ask me that all the time. I, I've been asked, what are your goals in the fall? What are your goals in the spring? This, this, and this. Ours are very simple. We have three for the spring. Play smart, play fast, play physical. If we can play smart, we're going to make good decisions. We're going to do things the right way when they need to be done. If we play fast, we have an opportunity to outwork our opponent. Uh, and if we can go out there and play physical and instill the, the, the level of play at which we want to do, we'll be very successful. So, I mean, our goals for spring are very simple. It's, it's that, it literally is that s simple when it comes to our three things. Um, so, I mean, for us, if we can play smart, we can play fast, and we can play physical this spring. And uh, it gives everything accomplished that we need to get accomplished. And uh, I think that's going to be huge because, I mean, it's, it's as a coaching staff, just like a player, everything's kind of uh, first day with first day in the weight room, first day doing this, first day doing this. Well, this is our first opportunity for the young men to kind of see what our expectations and standards are at practice and our first opportunity to exactly to see exactly how they are used to practicing what are what the things are we're going to have to adjust and change from there so my biggest thing I told the coaching staff this morning I've told our players is we've got to communicate at a high level uh, and we've got to be able to adjust to change and, and be able to tolerate those things and if we can do those things with those three keys we talked about it I'm very very excited about the fall all right and then just a few things about you. It mm -hmm. seems like such a simple question, but it might be hard. Why football? What made you a football guy? Uh, when I was growing up, I went to a private a private school that didn't have football until um, we transferred to a public school until sixth grade. And it's funny, if someone would have probably saw me in, in sixth grade when I played in probably seventh or eighth, even ninth, they probably thought, there's no way this dude's going to want to play football. Uh, I scared them on shadow. I didn't want to hit anybody. And then all of a sudden, I remember my, my offensive line coach, Coach Gowan, who was the head coach at McDowell High School, looked at me one time after my freshman year and said, get in the weight room uh, and decide this is what you want to do and you can be good at the sport. And uh, ever since then, I've never let that forget that. I, I've been very blessed to be around people like him. Um, like I said, Bart Tatum, Chip Hester, who is the head coach at Barton, was my co college head football coach, David Bennett, uh, Mike Bloomgren, who's at Rice, Jim Tom Sula, who was the D-line coach at Catawba, who was the head coach for the 49ers and also worked with the D-line coach in a lot of places. I've been very lucky to be around a lot of really good football coaches that they all had one thing in common. Um, they were consistent in their approach to what they wanted to do and what their expectations and standards were, and they cared about you as a human being. And for me, uh, I've seen how many of the young men that uh, we've had the opportunity to help and, and lead and push to become the best versions of themselves. So. For me, that's, that's why. I mean, people ask me all the time, when you're looking for coaches, what are you looking for? And I said, it's simple. There's three things. A guy that wants to build relationships, a guy that can be a great teacher, and a guy that's going to be simple and let people play fast. And we've got to develop these guys as human beings and grown men and get them to understand how important academics are because if we can do those things, I think the football side of things will continue to take care of itself. All right, so play, play to Catawba. Um, you have ties to this this region, this area. Mm -hmm. So how much of a factor did that play into you, you know, taking this position and coming here to Wise? I think it was huge. I mean, I, I've been in the Midwest for 14, 15 years. I was at, at Quincy University for 12. Uh, I was a head coach for seven, offensive coordinator for five. I was at Missouri Southern before that for three years. I was the offensive line coach. Um, so for me, getting an opportunity to move back closer to home, uh, being 13, 14 hours, <laughs> For 15 years was hard, especially when you have kids. Um, my parents aren't getting any younger. Getting an opportunity for them to be able to spend time with their, with their grandkids. My brother had his first kid. Uh, getting closer to my friends and family was probably the original thing. Um, but then when I got an opportunity to get on this campus and meet Chancellor Henry and meet Kendall Rainey and everybody else that was associated with this football program, I fell in love. Uh, I truly think that we can win here and we can do a lot of really good things and. I think the biggest thing for us is we've got to understand that 
Rome wasn't built overnight. We got to make sure we do a good job of sticking to our guns and continuing to do those things. But I, I couldn't be more happy about um, the backing we have is it from this university, our alumni, and everyone in this community so far. They've been nothing but kind to me and our staff and our family and our team. And uh, we've got to continue to, to earn that. Um, it's not something that's just freely given. You've got to earn respect from people, and we've got to continue to do that. Well, we definitely wish you the best of luck. Excited to see you play this fall. Just a couple of fun things. Favorite? You got a favorite sports movie, a favorite football movie? Uh, favorite sports movie, The Program. Okay. It's the best college football movie ever, ever made in my opinion. Old one, but it's a good one. <laughs> So, favorite team? Oh Lord, uh, Texas Longhorns. Uh, I, whenever I was younger, my dad took me to a uh, University of North Carolina uh, and Texas Longhorn uh, football game uh, in Chapel Hill, and that's when Matt Brown was at North Carolina the first time. And uh, it was funny. I, I, I we were sitting in the corner, and I got a chance to watch Texas roll out, and it just I fell in love. And uh, then he got then he went to go be the head coach there, and I actually got to my, go to my first. Uh, Texas game after football season last year with one of my best friends and actually got a chance to watch the last Texas Longhorn Big 12 conference game at home against Texas Tech and uh, so that's definitely my team from a from an NCAA standpoint NFL Tennessee Titans even though they gave up Derrick Henry <laughs> yeah that's a tough one yeah well yeah Let's see if they can uh, you know Recoup from that. But That's, uh, I mean, losing the best running back in the NFL and then putting him on the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> yeah. Very it difficult. Yeah, it does hurt. But that's cool. Texas Longhorns, that's a, they had a good team this year. They did. Probably a good, good game to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I don't know, do you have, uh, if you could think of one, one major, major influence off the top of your head right now, you just mentioned a whole list of guys that you've had a chance to coach with, but was there – Maybe even a guy you just looked up to as a kid watching the game of football. Um, I'm going to pick a coach I didn't mention, actually. Um, when I first got done, I got the opportunity to go coach back in Salisbury, where Catawba's at, at East Rowan High School. Uh, I got a chance to work for Brian Henson, who had played offensive line at Catawba a few years before me. Uh, and he's still a high school coach uh, in that area. Still talk to him all the time. He's a great friend. and uh, He's part of my family. And he's, I learned a lot uh, about how to be um, the type of man that I needed to be for the young men within our football program, uh, how to hold people accountable, but also how to get the most out of them. So I, I definitely say one of my biggest influences from that standpoint would be him. Um, he was, was huge uh, in my life from a coaching standpoint, and he still is. All right, good stuff. Well, thank, thank you again, you. appreciate the time. Appreciate and it. Good luck this season. Thank you Coach very Gary much. Bass. So there's UVA Wise head football coach Gary Bass and stay tuned because we're going to have another episode coming up later tonight as I make the trip over to Tusculum University and sit down with their first year head coach Billy Taylor. Now Taylor comes from ETSU where he was the defensive coordinator the last nine years now being the head man at Tusculum. That will be live on our website and YouTube tonight as well. But for now the State Line Sports Reporters podcast I'm Cole Johnson.